these are images of the painting when I first started. It was a beautiful day in October 2017 here in Phoenix and I invited some art friends over and we sat out in my backyard and painted and I had the concept then in my head of this Kansas tornado painting. So that's what you see on the screen right now is the beginning and I don't have video of all of that. I just laid down various colors and this video will show you how I finished up the painting by layering on a lot of layers of glazes and it ended up having a beautiful effect. I started this painting about a year and a half ago and I got to this stage and then I stopped because I wasn't really sure what to do with it next and if that ever happens to you just put the painting away and think about it and um, at some point you'll be inspired to work on it again and I call this the, the uh, Kansas Tornado and I just went on a trip to visit a really good friend back in Kansas and I had the opportunity to go through Eureka, Kansas which was hit recently by a very devastating tornado and I think it was actually more than one tornado that went through there and she lives very close to that so we drove through the town and um, I was really amazed at the power that a tornado can um, come out as and the devastation that can happen. I was also um, inspired by the people who live there and how strong they are and their perseverance and how they just keep going. I do like the colors of the sky during stormy periods and there's just so much power in nature and that was what inspired this painting. And I got it to this point by using brush, uh, no palette knife, it's just all brush strokes. And I stopped because, like I said, I wasn't sure what to do with it next. And now looking at it, I've decided that I really don't want to do a lot with it next. I just want to build up um, layers. And I don't want to change the actual flavor that it is. I, I am really happy with the look of it right now. But I want to change this. I don't like how this comes down. I'm going to kind of brighten up this area because when storms come in, oftentimes there are light areas and the sun coming through. So I like how this is really bright right there. And I might put just a little bit of sky color there to represent maybe water on the ground and reflection from the sky. The rest of it is all going to be done with layers of glazes. And I'm using for that Liquitex gloss medium and varnish and I really like the effects that this has and how I do that is I just put some in a little cup and I put a tint of color in it and glazing mediums like this and varnishes can really do some interesting things because you can layer one layer after another and you can see the other layers down underneath it. This is golden acrylic glazing medium glossy and it works well too, but the problem with it is that it's very, very opaque and uh, white when you have it in your cup like this. And it will actually dry totally clear. So it can be nice maybe um, as, a, as a final coat or something, but for me this kind of throws off the color when I'm working with it. I know it'll dry clear later, but the, I can't see how it looks right now. But I'm going to use a little bit of this and then you can see both ways and decide for yourself. Okay, so the tools that I'm using are this filbert brush, and this is a filbert also. The filberts are a little bit rounded on the ends instead of being flat across. I also have this larger size. I love this brush, and I think I'll use it when I fill in the sky. And for my sky, I have my cerulean blue, warm gray, Payne's gray, a little bit of yellow, and uh, white. And I'll be mixing those up together as I lay down different layers. And it may take a few layers. Like I said, I'm going to leave that as it is, but I may throw in a few layers up here. And I don't really want to change this too much. Okay, so like with all of my paintings, I get my brush damp. I, get, I dip it in the water and then I just dab it off on a napkin and then I pick up a little bit of one color and a little bit of another color and just start painting. Now you can see that that is quite a bit bluer 
brighter blue than what I had before so I'm going to want to tone that down a bit with um, Payne's Gray. Cerulean Blue is, is a very pretty blue but it's quite um, brilliant and if I throw in a little bit of warm gray that tones it down as well. If you've watched my paintings my other videos you'll know that it takes a lot of layers I like having some color on this side. I just don't want it to be as dark as it was. I think it kind of detracted and your eye kind of went over there and wondered what was happening there. Yeah, and then it has a little bit of color from up here. And I don't want real obvious streaks, so I can always go like this. And if you use your fingers, you should technically be using gloves. I want that to come up very carefully there. Now I'm just needing more layers down here but I don't I don't want it to fight with this. I want to put in just a little as a bit of color down here. A little bit of blue. Okay so now I'm going to leave that and I will start adding some glazes up here. So I need to get some paints ready. I'm going to start, I think, by working with my violets. I have deep violet and dioxazine purple. And the dioxazine purple looks in the tube here by the color of the tube that it's the lighter color, but it's actually the darker color. So normally I mix colors. So I just grab whatever's on my plate and get going, but I'm not doing that this time. Each of these glazes will have its own color in it. Of course, it can, the color that's in here could be a mixed color. But I'm going to just put one color in at this point. So you can see that it's, it's clear, somewhat clear. So I have my base coat down first of all of my colors. And then as I come back and add these glazes, it should just highlight what I have down. And it allows me to add layers that you can see through, which I think is a really nice effect. Plus I love the gloss. Now if you're doing a painting that has wet sand or something, this is, this is a really nice thing to do because it will, it will end up shiny and it'll have a wet look to it. But I'm doing it for the translucence. I want to be able to see, like when I put this down over that, you still see that dark teal under it. But you also can see just the hint of the purple. So I think I can get the feeling of quite a bit of movement in here with, with these layers of glazes. Okay, so now I'm going to um, Mix up a bit more purple because I really like that on there. But I'm going to bring the camera up closer so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, now as I come up this way in the light, you can see the glossiness there and the texture that I just added. And you can actually see the um, purple in the glaze. So you're adding texture plus you're adding shininess and just a whole different look to it. Now there's another area that added texture plus shine and a hint of purple. This is an area that doesn't have any yet. And then this is an area that has some. So you can see the difference there. So now I'm going to go ahead and add purple to other areas and then I'll come back and show you a different color. Okay, now I have a gloss varnish over the entire surface and I found that the opaque white from Golden uh, was fine. It didn't matter that I really couldn't see my color in it real well because I needed to put a coat down over the entire surface. And I have a really good light source here so I can see shine on my canvas and that's important. You can see the shine up here and as I come down into this area there is no shine. So I wanted to point out a couple of things. 
in some of these areas that are darker, there's more purple in it, I used um, some same varnish, but I put more of the purple in it. And this is what I mean. This is the, um, the mix with a lot more purple in it. So, and with that, I started by putting purple in there, and then I added the, the uh, gloss varnish to it. And um, I ended up with too much purple, but then, like I said, I ended up liking it anyway. And this one is the one that was almost clear. So it didn't leave a lot of color, just a hint of purple. I want to point out one more thing here. While this is drying, you can see some patches where it looks dull, such as up in this area right here off my finger, and this area through here. And that's actually not dull. I mean, it has, it actually has varnish on it, but it does appear to have a duller finish. And I think that's because of the acrylic paint that I mixed in with it. Um, so at this point, it can have varying levels of gloss, depending on how much paint you add, because the, the paint itself is not real glossy. But that's okay, because when I'm completely finished with it, I will be adding a gloss varnish over the whole thing. I wanted to point out something else, and that is that a lot of times when I'm working with a painting like this, when I reach about this stage where I feel like I'm almost finished with it, I take several photos. And the reason for that is you always see things in photos that you don't see when you're first taking the photo. And there's always the example of taking a photo of somebody and then later looking at it and there's a pole coming out of the back of their head or something like that. And you just don't always see it when you're looking right at the object. And an example of that with this painting is with this tornado here. In the photo, I really love the effect. This looked like it was up in front of this darker area. And that's the way it should be. This is further behind. But when you look at it in person, it can look like this black is on top of this piece here. And so it's a little kind of bothers the eye a little bit when you're looking at it. So now I'm going to come back and add a little bit of highlight to this edge right along here so I can make sure that this pops out forward. So this is a close-up of what I was just talking about. And I'm really, really happy with how all of this turned out. I love the added texture. I love the way the gloss varnish makes the colors just really pop, especially when I can layer colors. And I want to show you a couple of things close up. This area right here is where I had a little bit deeper varnish down. And I think what I'll do is I'll come back and just blend that in a little bit better. I, I don't want to change it too much because I do like that texture. But I'll need to change it a little bit. And this area right here is where I had put down some gloss. And then I took my brush and swept over it and removed it. And it just left this little bit of an outline here. So that needs to be touched up a bit too. But other than that, just maybe a little bit of highlight here and there, and I think it's, it's good to go. Okay, so now I have gone back and touched up a bit in here, and I'm letting that dry. And for that, I use the same thing that I have used in a lot of my painting videos, and that's my little frazzly brush. Now, I decided to um, use the glaze sort of like you would water, but in place of water. So what I did is I put a little bit of darker yellow and some lighter yellow, and I didn't use any white, but then in this little cup, I have my Liquitex gloss medium and varnish. And I have also a little bit of warm gray, which is more of a beige, and some Payne's gray, and I can use that to kind of tone down and blend. So I just dip my little brush into the glaze and take just a touch of the warm gray. And you can see that it's, it's just like blending with water. And I can come in here and blend this a little bit better because I don't want it to just suddenly be super bright. Now I took a photo last night and I just brought it up in the edit program that you have on any cell phone. 
and I drew a line right across here, right across here and down here so that I would remember today where I needed to add a bit to the edges. Again, then I can just take a little bit of this brighter yellow and I had just dipped my brush in the um, glaze, but I could dip it again. So I'm kind of going back and forth between the glaze and the paint because I just want to make sure that I don't have too much here. But I want to make sure to bring that edge out a bit. I could even add a tiny bit of white to it. And if it gets to be too much, I can add some Payne's Gray. So I don't want a real hard edge either. I just want it to show up a little bit more than it did. Okay, I brought the camera in a little bit more so that you can kind of see better what I'm doing. And I don't have to worry about if this color is too yellow because I can go back and touch it up. Right now I just want to make sure that I'm bringing it forward. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing the warm gray with a little bit of white that tones down the yellow slightly. And then just kind of hitting that edge. And now I can smooth it out with a little more glaze. I'm not using any water, I'm only using glaze. That brings that cloud forward, and I really like that. I'll do a little bit up here. Now in this section, I had a little more of the yellow ochre, which is the darker gold, so I'm going to stick with that. And I've mixed it with glaze that's already on my brush. Now I had the white up here and I wanted the eye to kind of notice that. And when I stand back, I overall like it, but this is a little bit too much here. So I will tone that down by bringing in just some glaze and kind of smearing that out a little. And I can even bring in a little bit of Payne's Gray, kind of take that brightness down because I really don't want to take away from that side. The idea is to keep the eye floating around the painting. See, it's almost like I'm erasing the edges there a little bit. So there's just a little bit up there, but not too much. So at this point, you just kind of have to continually stand back and look at your work. So now here we are. And then this is highlighted nicely here so that it looks in real life more like it did actually in the, um, in the photos. So now I've reached a point where I need to let it sit and dry because I just put down glazes. And as I mentioned before, the glazes need to be thoroughly dry before working with it anymore. Um, because I don't want to pull off any glaze. I didn't end up changing anything up here. I, I may or may not. I'll see what it all looks like when it's completely finished. And I'll take several photos. I may want to highlight a little bit up through here in a couple of places, but I'll wait and see what it's like when it's dry and then it'll be ready if in case I want to change anything. When it's all completely finished, that's when I'll put the full coat on it. Okay, I've decided to work on this area here a little bit. Just kind of seemed to need a little something. So I have thallow green and Payne's gray, and I'm mixing them a little bit on this plate and then picking up a bit of glaze. And then I can just kind of run up over it, putting down the glaze, and that'll all just blend nicely. Now, thallow green all by itself is quite bright didn't want it quite that bright. That's why I'm bringing in the Payne's Gray. But 
it really needs, it does need a lot of layers here of, of glaze. Now I really won't know completely what that will look like until it's finished drying. So this area here is what I worked on. It almost like there's, it looks like there's a glow from behind, which is kind of nice. And then I added to this area. And then I added just a little tiny touch of that same teal right down in here. So I will have to decide after it dries if this is too much. So if I decide it's a little too much, all I have to do is add just a, a little bit of Payne's Gray to it. But I can't do it now. I would like to, but I know better because I would just lift off the varnish that I just put down. I'm going to show an example of something else here. This is just my last minute little touch-ups that I'm doing. I have ever so slightly a tiny tint of teal on my brush. And where some of these strokes are that kind of stand out a bit more than I want. When I'm looking at it from afar, I can kind of blend that in a little bit more by adding another layer of glaze. The idea is any place that you're looking at on the painting, you don't want any one spot to just pop out. You want your eye to go to an area, but not get stuck there. So now I'm very happy with it. I have glaze over all of it as far as all the undercoatings of glaze. Now I'm going to put one more coating over the whole thing using the Liquitex gloss medium and varnish and um, as I'm looking at it though I see one more little spot and if I varnish it and then I decide it really wasn't quite finished that's perfectly fine this writing here it just seems like it's not quite right I need just a little bit of something in there I like that better because for a couple of reasons. It has just a little bit of the teal in it, which ties in with over here. This has been toned down. I came back and added just a tiny bit more teal in those places along the bottom. And again here, because I wanted that to reflect what's up in the sky and maybe give an idea of a little bit of water. Okay, I wanted to show you the sides. I ended up not wrapping around the um, design on the front to the sides. I created the sides by brushing on a mixture of the colors that are on the front using mostly Payne's gray, teal, and warm gray. And then I used, um, besides the brush, some finger painting. Sometimes I come back and do palette knife, but the main thing is you can see that it's variegated, and I think that's important. And it actually blends with what's up on the front. And from this angle you can really see the dull areas. I have not put on the final varnish yet. I think I would like to start up a newsletter because there are things in there that I can add in the way of information and links to things that I think you might find interesting. Kind of um, one spot for everything. I help you keep up to date on my latest videos and things like that. And I have my contact information in there. So if you sign up for that newsletter, it's not, it's not out there yet, but it will be. You can check this link. By the time this video is up, maybe I will have it set up. But um, that way you can keep up to date and not miss anything. Thank you again for watching my video, and please remember to subscribe.